I bet you will never be able to predict the twist in this video. Ooh, that's right, today I'm discussing my entry. First, you didn't see that coming, did you? So yes, in today's video, Matthew and I will be discussing our favourite film plot twists. Or to maybe be more specific, the twists that caught us off guard. And there have been very few plot twists that have had an effect on me. But there has been one plot twist that has had my jaw literally glued to the floor. There has never been a more shocking plot twist and before I go any further, I should maybe explain one thing. A plot twist doesn't need to necessarily occur in a film's latter half. As long as it's a plot point that you personally didn't see coming, then you could very well class it as a plot twist. And that is why my pick is the 2018 horror film directed by Ari Aster, Hereditary. Spoilers for the film Hereditary by the way, seeing as we're talking about plot twists in today's video, it's, it's fair to say that we're going to delve into some spoilers. Now I vividly remember the marketing for this film before it came out. Pretty much any poster, trailer, TV spot put a lot of focus on the character of Charlie, the youngest daughter of the family that stars in the film. And this is also very clear in the film's first act. You wouldn't be accused of thinking that this little girl was going to be the main protagonist or at least the main antagonist of the picture. So imagine my shock when Ari Aster comes in and pretty much kills the bitch off half an hour into the film. Ask pretty much anyone who's seen the movie and they will pretty much all unanimously agree that this is the most fucked up scene in the entire film. The death literally comes out of fucking nowhere. Essentially Alex Wolf's character, whose name is escaping me at this point, has been forced by his mother to take Charlie along with him to a high school house party. And before this whole situation takes place, the audience already knows that Charlie has a nut allergy. And given the fact that one of the first shots that we see of this party is a close-up shot of a girl chopping nuts, it's fair to say that this is not going to end well. But I think everyone can agree that we did not expect it to go down like this. She ends up eating the nuts. Get your mind out of the gutter, she's a little girl. And the intoxicated Alex Wolf must drive her to a hospital ASAP. On the car ride to the hospital, Charlie is struggling to breathe and in order for her to hopefully get some air back into her body, she rolls down a window. She proceeds to pop her head out, Alex Wolf veers off the road, and then suddenly, kabam! Charlie's head comes clean off of her body like a fucking champagne cork. And again, I was not expecting this horrific death to occur. At least not only 30 minutes into the fucking thing. After her head comes off, Alex Wolf screeches to a halt and just spends what feels like 10 minutes just composing himself. Which is good for me because I also need to compose myself. I mean, you've killed off your main character only half an hour in. What's gonna happen now? And for those who haven't seen the film and think, oh, Charlie surely comes back at some point during the film. Nope, Charlie is as dead as a dodo and throughout most of the second act, it is just the family grieving over their loss. It's haunting, it's shocking, and most importantly, it was extremely unpredictable. And with that, the video draws to its midpoint. Now I'm going to pass it over to Matthew, where he is going to discuss his favourite plot twist. Let's, let's hope that there's no more plot twists in this video. Take it away, Matthew, son. So for today's Movies and Milk, I was actually going to play a wee drum solo for you there. Considering my choice today is a film that involves drums, and you'll find that out in a wee second. Uh, drum kits uh, right out the back there. Uh, that's no happening. And my second kit, which is an electric drum kit, which you can play at any time of the day, uh, is absolutely collecting dust there, so uh, that's not for happening either. So you're just going to have to believe that I play the drums. 
Having a plot twist within a film is so inherently frequented these days, and the plot twist has become its own worst enemy. They have been done to death and we can see them coming from a mile away. However, and admittedly, there have been some great films out there with some great plot twists in the last 10 years or so, and so I have purposely chosen a film from 2014 that I would wish to discuss today because I think it is one of the best examples of a plot twist in movie history. I am talking about Damien Chazelle's 2014 masterpiece, Whiplash. Whiplash follows aspiring drummer Andrew, portrayed by Miles Teller, who naturally becomes so obsessed with being successful that it begins to take hold of his relationships, and this is all completely responsible and down to J.K. Simmons' character in the film. I went to the cinema to see this film back in 2014 with a couple of friends of mine, being a drummer myself and being a huge admirer of jazz music. This was right at the very top of my list for my most anticipated films of 2014, and this film did not disappoint at all. Damien Chazelle is such an incredible talent, and he has proven that time after time with his subsequent works, the likes of La La Land and of course First Man. For a writer and director, his filmography so far with only three films has absolutely proven that he is one of the strongest filmmakers working today. Now if anyone has seen Whiplash you probably know exactly what scene I'm going to be talking about. The finale of Whiplash is not only one of the greatest finales to a film ever, but is also one of the most shocking, surprising and suspenseful scenes in movie history. It is revealed by Fletcher in the third act of the film that he knows that Andrew is responsible for testifying against him earlier on in the film. And so with Andrew believing that Fletcher has given him a chance due to his talents as a drummer, he in fact instructs his band to play a completely different song that Andrew does not know at all. And this is a completely deviant act that Fletcher orchestrates to humiliate Andrew in front of the masses. I guess maybe you don't have it. However, as Andrew walks off of the stage completely in tears and humiliated, after a short conversation with his father, he decides to return to the stage and prove his worth as a drummer. Now, I honestly did not see which direction this could possibly go from there. Andrew counts the band in for a song entitled Caravan, and the band of course oblige, and we have one of the most beautiful moments in film history. It is honestly incredible. <sighs> Gives me goosebumps every time. Now this to me, as a, an observer of the screen, presents me with several directions as to where this could possibly go. Fletcher could continue to humiliate Andrew on stage. He could stop the performance altogether. But what Fletcher chooses to go with, or I suppose you could say is forced to go with, is the decision to allow Andrew this spotlight. <laughs> Fletcher is growing to Andrew, he admires his ambitions to come back on stage and prove him wrong. It is honestly just such an incredible moment in film history. But uh, aye, if you haven't seen the film then you don't need to watch it anymore because I've just absolutely spoiled it for you. So my camera just died as I was drawing this review to a close there. But never mind, the iPhone always comes in handy. Thank you ever so much for watching today's video. We're drawn ever closer to the end of the 30 day film challenge. And so Michael and I would just like to thank you for your continued support. And if you're a newcomer to the channel, then please don't hesitate to like this video, comment down below your favorite film for this day, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more content from both of us. And as always, stay safe, don't do anything stupid, and we'll see you in the next video. Where's my milk?